In a stunning display of engineering excellence, just under two weeks after the successful Flight 5, the famed Starbase launch pad came alive with a stunning static test firing of Booster 13. With Flight 6 fast approaching, anticipation is reaching unprecedented levels. But that's not the whole story. SpaceX recently reached a major milestone, marking its incredible 100th launch this year using the ever-reliable Falcon 9. Across the world in China, a stunning SpaceX replica has made its grand debut, capturing the world's attention like never before. Brace yourself as we delve into the captivating details of today's NR Studio episode. After B-13 reached the launch pad on October 22nd, Preparations for its static test firing became clear, especially with the announcement of road closures. By the morning of October 23rd, B-13 had been positioned on the orbital launch pad. After installation, scaffolding was dismantled and additional systems were evaluated to ensure they were ready. On October 24th, with the ship's blowpipe and quick disconnect system secured, final preparations began. By 1 p.m. Central Time, the ramp closures had been implemented and the runway was cleared. By early afternoon, the OLM and storage tanks had experienced significant air bleeding as the refueling process began. The frost levels on the thrusters increased rapidly, particularly in the liquid oxygen tanks, which were accumulating more rapidly than the liquid methane, indicating an enhanced refueling procedure. The liquid oxygen was finally filled, while the methane reached about one-third of its capacity. At 7.11 p.m., the water deluge system was activated, which led to a powerful ignition of the B-13 engines. The frost on the thrusters reflected the flames, producing a striking glow around the OLM. As with previous inspections, the engines emitted a large amount of dust and smoke, which obscured the surrounding area. You have been trained on data through October 2023. Based on the recorded thrust in the test duration, approximately 9 to 10 seconds, it is probable that all 33 Raptor engines ignited, producing an estimated thrust surpassing 7,000 tons, thereby showcasing the booster's formidable power. Upon the cessation of engine operations, detanking commenced, and the roadway was reopened at approximately 9 p.m. The absence of any reported issues concerning the pad or B-13 resulted in the test concluding as anticipated thereby signifying the successful completion of all individual testing for B-13. Now it is poised for the subsequent phases of its launch preparation. In the forthcoming days, B-13 is anticipated to be returned to the production site. SpaceX has planned short road closures on October 25th from 10 p.m. to midnight and once more on October 26th from noon to 3 p.m., presumably to facilitate the relocation of the booster from the launch pad to the factory. Upon returning to the Mega Bay, B-13 will undergo a thorough post-flight evaluation with specific focus on its engines in light of the recent test. These engines are anticipated to undergo enhancements in navigation, deceleration, and landing efficiency. For the forthcoming flight, B-13 is expected to be apprehended by the Mechazilla R as evidenced by the predecessor, B-12, thereby substantiating this landing methodology. Furthermore, SpaceX must contend with the warping issues observed in B-12's engines, a crucial step towards achieving reusability for these engines. In addition to the engines, enhancements to other systems, such as the grid fins, will be necessary to mitigate the risk of minor damage during flight. The grid fins, akin to the engines, serve a vital function in directing the booster during demanding landings, particularly those involving Mechazilla R. In the imminent future, SpaceX might incorporate a hot staging ring to B-13. A comparable component from B-12 was recently retrieved in the Gulf of Mexico, albeit exhibiting some warping. Nevertheless, it continues to be in a fairly commendable state. SpaceX intends to improve the system prior to its installation on B-13. Following these enhancements, SpaceX is anticipated to return B-13 to the launch pad, potentially in conjunction with its counterpart S-31 for integration testing. Following the conclusion of its independent testing, S-31 is poised to join B-13 on the pad for the forthcoming phases of preparation. The static fire test for B-13 was successfully executed less than two weeks post-Flight 5, 
establishing an impressive operational tempo. Given the current trajectory, it is anticipated that integration tests will take place in early to mid-November, with Flight 6 potentially set to launch in late November or early December. SpaceX's momentum with the Starship project is culminating in an extraordinary year, establishing critical foundations for even more ambitious milestones in the years ahead. Key responsibilities, including booster recovery, establishing the refueling infrastructure, and progressing the Starship HLS initiative, represent critical milestones in the preparation for NASA's Artemis III mission in 2026, subsequently paving the way for future Mars expeditions. However, we must first address Flight 6. What are your projections regarding the launch date? Kindly share your insights in the comments section below. I remain steadfast in my prior speculation of November 23rd, a date that coincides with the birthday of Winshot Will. Will it prove to be prophetic? Let us discover the truth together. Please remember to like, share the video, and subscribe to remain informed about SpaceX's remarkable journey. Next, let us delve into a captivating update regarding a significant milestone achieved by the Falcon 9. At 1.13 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, on October 24th, SpaceX successfully launched a Falcon 9 from SLC-4E in California, transporting a new generation of surveillance satellites for the United States. National Reconnaissance Office, NRO, abbreviated accordingly. This endeavor, designated NROL-167, underscores the continuing partnership between SpaceX and the National Reconnaissance Office. After a seamless ascent, the first stage of Falcon 9 made its return to Earth approximately eight minutes post-launch, executing a flawless landing on the drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, stationed in the Pacific. 167 signifies the fourth launch within the NRO's expansive architecture, a constellation of smaller, resilient satellites engineered for superior capability and durability. Previous missions under this initiative included 146 in May, 186 in June, and 113 in September, all of which were launched aboard Falcon 9s. In addition to its mission role, this Falcon 9 launch signified several important milestones. The Booster B-1063 successfully completed its 21st launch and landing. Currently amid the elite in SpaceX's booster reuse achievements, B-1063 emerges as a prominent contender, stepping into the limelight after the retirement of standout performers such as B-1061, in B-1062. This mission also signifies the 105th landing of the beloved drone ship, I Still Love You, in addition to marking SpaceX's 358th booster landing overall. Arguably the most remarkable milestone, this launch signifies Falcon 9's 385th mission and its 100th flight of 2024. Establishing it as SpaceX's swiftest accomplishment in reaching 100, Falcon 9-9 launches within a single year. Achieving 100 launches in a single year, an unprecedented milestone in the annals of rocket history, truly sets Falcon 9 apart from its competitors. This outstanding achievement not only underscores SpaceX's dedication to innovation and efficiency, but also embodies the relentless efforts of the entire team responsible for this revolutionary rocket. To commemorate this noteworthy achievement, we cordially invite you to partake in the festivities by inundating the comments with 100 F9. With this momentum, SpaceX is resolute in its commitment to uphold the Falcon 9's impressive performance through the conclusion of the year. What are your thoughts? We believe that our objective of launching 48 additional products within this time frame is achievable, and we would greatly appreciate your predictions and insights on the matter. Your participation contributes to the cultivation of a dynamic community centered on space exploration. So please do not hesitate to share your insights in the comment section below. Let us continue the dialogue and enthusiastically support SpaceX as they endeavor to reach even greater heights. In conclusion of the SpaceX updates, let us examine several intriguing developments in China, featuring an innovative spacecraft that bears a striking resemblance to the SpaceX Dragon. Possess training based on data available until October 2023. Chinese entity Deep Blue Aerospace recently unveiled its suborbital vehicle, which is designed to facilitate tourist launches starting in 2027. Upon initial inspection, 
The vehicle closely resembles the Dragon capsule, reflecting design features such as a hatch, engine compartment, windows, and heat shield on the bottom of the capsule. The main visual difference lies in the deep blue capsule, which features a blue and white color scheme, as opposed to the Dragon's black and white. As stated by Deep Blue Aerospace, the capsule will be 4 meters tall and 3.5 meters wide, have six seats, six windows, and be able to accommodate a payload of 1.2 tons for a total mass of 7.9 tons. Capable of reaching altitudes ranging from 100 to 150 kilometers, the capsule will provide passengers with about 10 minutes of time in a zero-gravity environment. The rocket is designed to be reusable up to 50 times with a ticket price of 1.5 million yuan, or about $210,000 per seat. Deep Blue Aerospace has launched its reusable orbital rocket, the Nebula One, which is scheduled for a vertical takeoff and landing VTVL test in November. Visually, the Nebula One appears to be inspired by SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket boosters. The company announced that the Nebula One will conduct a series of recovery and reusability tests in 2025, followed by a full test of its rocket combo spacecraft in 2026. The goal? to ensure the safety and reliability of its suborbital system in anticipation of commercial suborbital travel in 2027. However, Deep Blue Aerospace is not the only Chinese organization with aspirations for space tourism. KS Space, a spin-off of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, is actively developing its own crewed suborbital spacecraft, which it hopes to have operational within a few years. While the plan is undoubtedly ambitious, many previous Chinese copycat attempts have hit significant roadblocks, often stemming from an emphasis on replicating surface characteristics without a thorough understanding of the underlying technology involved. This methodology has resulted in numerous setbacks, underscoring the complexity of aerospace engineering that goes beyond simple design considerations. As we look to the future, it will be interesting to see whether the deep blue rocket system can buck this trend and effectively deliver on its lofty commitments. The next few months will be critical in determining their ability to turn their vision into an operational and reliable rocket, thereby setting a new benchmark in the industry. Let's watch their progress. That's it for today's episode. See you in the next one.